Hey everyone and welcome to Skill Cap. Today we have a very special guide for you that will be teaching you how to escape the lower elo brackets. Now in the previous guide in this series, I, an Immortal 3 player, was sent to smurf in the gold ranks to show strategies, tactics, and techniques that you can use to climb to platinum. Well, one of the most common complaints we receive about this kind of smurf content is that my superior aim can often overshadow what we're trying to teach. A common request from you guys is to set certain restrictions and challenges to prevent my aim from having such a big impact, and so we decided to listen to your feedback. Here's the challenge. I have to climb from iron to silver, queuing by myself, only able to use a classic pistol with no armor, and I'm not allowed to use abilities. Now, this wasn't done to just show off. Trust me, running around with nothing but a classic pistol can get old really fast. Instead, it's to teach a couple of different things. First, it will demonstrate how you should be playing on eco or save rounds when you have nothing but your classic pistol against fully geared enemies. Additionally, since I'm at such a huge disadvantage, I'm forced into pretty much relying only on strategy, tactics, and decision making to set myself up to win fights. Now, what you'll find throughout this guide is that we'll jump from my in-game live commentary to my post-game analysis. This will give you unique insights into what I'm thinking about and what my plans are as the game happens. Plus, it lets you guys know what we teach here at Skillcap actually gets used in real games effectively, and that we aren't just relying on some sort of natural talent and then overanalyzing the game after to make what we teach seem more important than it is. Now, before we head into the first round, remember you can access the full live commentary of this game on our website, skillcap.com, link in the description below. It's there you'll not only find over 700 premium Valorant guides, but we also have up-to-date lineups for your favorite agents, detailed map breakdowns of the best strategies and spots to play, and an expanding library of live smurf commentaries by some of the top Valorant players breaking down how you too can climb out of every rank in Valorant, ranging all the way from Iron to Diamond. All of this can be unlocked with no risk with our rank improvement guarantee, so click the link in the description below, head to skillcap.com, and get the rank you've always wanted. Alright, so starting in round 4, where the enemy team has armor and guns against my classic pistol, let's jump into the live commentary. Omen, can you smoke here and ramps? I'm gonna throw a few shots through smoke. Always want to move after you throw a few shots. Again, same idea. Line up at headshot level. Span a couple of headshots through smoke. A lot of times if someone's... Oh, I was about to say I was just about to try and trade kill off that guy. Looks like... Sometimes you gotta bunny hop in situations like this. I briefly hold this angle with them. Yeah, it looked like... A uh, breach... Or a brimstone might push in off that. Again, hear gunshots. In contact. Remember how last time I said if we can get, if we can push through, if we can get to an unexpected location, we will. Well, that's what we're doing right now. I saw based off the information on the map that it looked like either both of them. Okay, cool. So I just gotta wait here. Okay. They're not going in from. It's fine. I'll go to where his body is. If Phoenix alts like this, always just run towards the body because he has to bot jump back. Okay, the knife counts, right? The knife, that doesn't... <laughs> Classic pistol only, we can still knife. The knife is still allowed. So one technique I'll be utilizing throughout this climb is playing the second man or swinging off my teammate's contact. Notice how if you look at the minimap, you can see our teammates at ramp watching screens. Well, Omen just died there to Brimstone, so we wait until we see on the minimap our teammates spot Brimstone. We hear gunfire, so we know our teammates are in a gunfight with him. By timing your swings off the enemy's contact, it will give you a massive advantage since the opponent will be distracted and have to readjust their crosshair on you. From here, you then see me push out screens to head into A Heaven. This is a very strong tactic to use in the post plant on A site as attackers. If you can sneak into screens, you end up getting this unexpected flank in A Heaven, which then lets you overlook site as well. Also, one tip, if you ever hear a Phoenix ult in the post plant, realize you don't have to defend the defuse since he won't have time to defuse the bomb entirely before he goes back to his body. Instead, look to hunt down his original location since he has to jump back to it once his ult expires. Okay, so let's jump into round 6 where we look to attack A site once again. And I'm lining it up with this corner here, and then I go slightly to the left of it at right around head level, in case he's holding like a default position. I'm just realizing I'm using a lot of uh, ammo. Last time the guy pushed sewers. Stay up close. Two headshots with the right click at this range is a kill. 
Okay, no one's sewers. Again, remember that rotation plan we talked about in the silo? I'm not running yet because um, there's three people alive. And right now on the minimap, my teammates don't see any of them. Now, I can go for the plant, but... Okay, see, now we see two. You know, there's th three alive. Two alive. Now, a lot of times you could, I would go to plant near, right? But I have such a good flank. That if I plant, I'm kind of like... Okay. Now I've revealed my position. This is the key to this, okay? Now you go plant. Now planting in this position, if you're in a 1v1 scenario on B site, you want to plant right out in the open right here. Okay. The reason for this is you can do a little swoop around through alley, and when you get to heaven you can shoot down on them. It's a very tough position for them to play, and I can hold this angle here, which can be a little bit unexpected if he tries to go this way. So I can hear him. If he goes this way, again, I'm playing up close for that. I'm going to left click into a right click. Because the left click into the right click combo is um, uh, just gets four bullets off instead of uh, the three of the burst, and it's still just as fast. Like you know what I mean? Like if you if I right click, the time a left click and a right click, it's not gonna. I'm gonna be able to get that off before you can shoot back. Um, so yeah, you can see the power of the rotations, but also when we rotate, keep in mind if you just plant solo on a site, if you ha if you've got a free site like that, well, they don't know you're there, so you can always just go for the flank instead and tr try and pick up a kill and then run back to the site and plant. This round was the start of me taking advantage of low ranked players' lack of map awareness and how you can exploit this using rotations. This kind of playstyle is referred to as playing the lurk or the lurker role, and as you'll see throughout this guide, it's very effective against low ranked players. This A hit is becoming a bit telegraphed at this point. I heard the metallic thing, that's why I started shooting through this, the smoke. Oh my lord, I'm getting out of here. Okay, teammates are ulting. I'm just gonna hold here for the flank. We're not making any progress. Okay. It's completely two players detained. It's huge. Again, same thing as last time. Same strategy. In Iron, this is just very effective. People aren't. People don't have a lot of map awareness, um, so you can exploit it with these types of rotations. Awesome. And go right here again, playing these little spots. This is how you play on Eco. Last player standing. Need to go for the right click here. Okay. See the power of that right click. Thirty seconds left. Now, here, I'm gonna do a little bit of a fancy play. By faking the plant, he's forced into, see, revealing his position. Now that he's revealed his position, same flank. And based off the time, keep in mind um, the sound that I heard, I was 100% willing to just run A site if I if I needed to. Meaning if I got to the stairs position, maybe I didn't hear him, maybe I didn't know what was going on, I didn't. it just didn't work out as well for some reason, I would just run A at that point because I know he would be around mid and I could get the plant A. Well, I would probably walk to like about this position and then run um, so I could plant there at the last second. Hopefully, you're starting to see the pattern in this playstyle. Let's jump into the final round of playing the Lurker role. But yeah, baiting this A hit isn't working, so I'm actually going to see what happens since, I mean, I'm just flanking through mid repeatedly and it's working. I wonder if I just start out the round on mid. Kind of listen for info. See if anyone pushes up, see if I can gather any intel. See kind of what's going on. Sometimes people get in that position. Okay. No one's in vents. Sometimes people play behind that box. Cleared that. Okay, we just heard him. See? We hear him falling off. Now we have a great flank. I'm so confident that they've rotated off that I literally have my knife out. Again, if we plant... Oh, I don't even have the bomb. Well, if we did plant, um, it wouldn't matter. Because then all of a sudden, they just swarm us. 
Instead, I have that unexpected flank. You can see this is a pattern just really exploiting. So here are the common patterns of playing Lurker. First, being patient and hiding, not revealing your location at all to really sell that the whole team is hitting a different site. You then wait, and often you'll hear the footsteps of the defenders rotating. This is your signal to begin walking on the flank. Often, if you do hear the footsteps, you can be confident no one else is waiting nearby, so you can look to move a bit faster by having your knife out. From here, you then look to get an unexpected pick on an enemy from their flank, and it's important if you have the spike to now look to rotate to the other site for a free plant. And one of the best tactics to use on B-site on split in the post plant is to plant out in the open, and then flank through alley to get to rafters for an unexpected pick on the enemy trying to defuse or clear the site. Alright, now for our final round on attack, let's take a look at how to play when you group with your team and to hit B-site on split. I'm just going to show a different strategy. Great, we got the pick, we can move in. Uh, let's rush into the site. Weird. Okay, we'll go for the trade killer. Again, just right click, jiggle right click, jiggle right click. That's the key to the classic. That's why the classic is so strong. Set jiggle right click. Okay. A couple of different positions I can play. Here, I'm choosing to watch the flank. That's the choice I made. I'm not saying it's the best choice. It's just I noticed that our flank was open. So I decided to watch it. It's planted default, so swooping around through mid is not a good idea. I can listen for his drop. There, he dropped. Now I can get to this position. This is key. Now, we listen. We let him go on the bomb. We get up close for a right click. We miss every single shot because we're... <laughs> All right, a bit awkward there. All right, so one thing I wanted to highlight was how after I planted the spike, I made the decision to watch the flank. This is because of how B site is structured. Often, if someone comes from B garage, you have no cover and can easily die. So I looked to try to get into this cubby to hopefully catch anyone flanking off guard to help increase my chances to win the fight with my classic pistol. However, we then spot Reyna at B heaven on the minimap. Whenever you find yourself in this situation, one of the best ways you can play is to listen for the enemy to drop down from the rafters. This will give you this flank path behind pillar based off their drop timing. You then want to let them defuse, and typically at this point they'll assume you're playing in garage, so when you suddenly peek on them from where they just came from, it completely catches them off guard. Also, a nice trick here, notice how I jumped and landed the right click, and then immediately swung to my right afterwards. This is a tactic I took from the pro player Lowell of Team Heretics. By jump peeking first, you trick the enemy into thinking you'll jump peek a second time, so they'll pre-aim their crosshair there, but you then just immediately swing and suddenly they get caught off guard and have to land a flick. Alright, let's swap sides and look at how we should play on the defense. Alright, same idea. Playing the center of the map can just be really valuable. Get a huge impact, that way you can actually get to a site in time to help defend it. And this crossfire is going to catch so many people off guard. It, like literally forever <laughs> for at all ranks but is especially powerful powerful in lower ranks um because they're not even going to be aware of this angle they're gonna think this is clear when it's not it's b it's b or they're slowly mid right now look at where reyna is that's how i know it's b again try and set up a crossfire with this omen And I was able to swing off him. I can fall back. I need to use cover. This is a nice little... I just realized... Okay, there's one there. Okay, jet just... No, that's our jet. I was worried about mid, but you... Rotate to the spike. The enemy has to go to the spike. That's what's... One enemy remaining. So, as long as we play at the spike... Ooh, I can play this crossfire or swing off my killjoy here. See how he's moving up? No, I'm moving up. So my basic plan will be to play this strong off angle in vents. This will often get me free kills if the enemy tries to push B heaven from mid, while I can also move to a more up close position in vents to try and right click on any enemies trying to push me, or simply fall back into ropes to hold more close angles, looking to right click one shot with that classic. 
One thing I may switch up, like if people are having trouble actually holding sight, I'll switch to like cheesing a sight. I'm also paying attention to how they're playing, like they're playing very spread out. If for example they were just hitting B as 5, I would start looking for flank opportunities, but I don't think there are flanks, uh, flank opportunities based off of how they're playing. So my jet's pushing on the minimap. Nice trick here, you can actually just move into the smoke. That way if they push through the smoke, we'll see them and I can, I can right click. Now the smoke is about to expire, so I'll get out of the smoke. And then go back to holding this angle. Man. See how strong this angle is? Finally got paid off for it. Cool, this Phoenix? Yeah. Okay, I gotta move fast while one's planning. This is tough. I think I can bait this. Uh, he had E. As soon as I saw the E come down, it, I thought maybe he missed it. That's why I hugged the corner. As soon as the E went down, I should have swung. I was trying to bait the peak there. I was also worried he was going to flash me. So if I, I was playing the corner in a way so that if something... Here, let me go to a different corner. <laughs> I was playing the corner in such a way that if the flash came out, I was going to move forward and swing on him. So I dodged the flash uh, by it being behind me. So that, that was the plan. Also, I was hoping to catch him up while he was in his flash animation. But he actually had hot hands, so... As soon as the hot hands was thrown on the ground, I should have instantly swung out. Since I should have just assumed, you know, it's a pretty easy thing to land. Next, let's switch things up and take a look at how you can play a sight on defense. So I don't think playing vents is going to work. They should check, be checking the angle frequently. They're smoking. They're not really going in. So I think what I'm going to do... Also, it's like last round, so I kind of want to switch it up for you guys and show you guys like a different possible strategy or possible way of playing. So one way of playing um, on A here is jiggling for info. This is risky. You sometimes against good players will get killed. But if you jiggle for info and don't see anyone and then you don't hear anyone, you can kind of uh, test whether you can push the flank or not. Okay, the fact that he slowed this, this spot's really powerful in here. Actually, I just noticed where Reyna's positioned. This is, seems like a bit of a... Okay, Jet was there. I checked my minimap. Sometimes if you don't know if you saw someone, if you just glance at the minimap, I'll tell you. So I'm going to play this angle. Can't swing off my Reyna at this range, based off of how she was playing. So Jet dashed. This position's really, really good as a cheese position. All right, that, that's a perfect example of why not to right click. Like a perfect situation. Sometimes if you drop down here and then crouch like this, people don't check and they actually drop over top of you. Yeah, I've had that happen to me before. Okay, Gotta just move fast. I think I heard him alley. Yeah, he's doing the same thing again, so this time. Oh, I headshotted him. Fair game, Phoenix. He switched up where he played. That was smart of him. Now, I just want to highlight how great this enemy Phoenix has been playing in the post plant. Firstly, he's been hiding and playing safe, waiting for me to tap the spike. Once I've done this, he then throws utility on the spike. This is the opposite of the common mistake low ranked players make of either peeking and taking gunfights before the enemy has even tapped the spike or not utilizing their utility to damage the opponent once they tap the spike and reveal their location. Secondly, he made sure to switch the location he was playing after our first post plant scenario. This is very important to do since if you just play in the same post plant location, players won't fall for your same tricks and instead will tap the spike into immediately swinging on your previous location. All right, for the final round, let's switch it up once again and take a look at how to play B site on defense. That's where we're losing the most. So we'll play B. It's a couple of smart way, one one cool trick. I wonder if I'll, I'll call it now, but if I can get to this position and you can crouch here and you can wait for someone to plant, you can then swing and get the guy. Um, we'll see if I can end up doing that. Again, same idea. You can kind of jiggle for info. You gotta be, you know, clean with your movement. You don't want to overswing it. Okay, again, we heard them too. So now we know that they're coming. Ooh, I can get in that smoke. Horrible smoke by them. Okay, someone made it through. It's actually good for me. Because now I can go like this. 
Oh, this one's about to expire. I need to get out of here. Oh, I need to get in hell position. Because we cleared so many from... Same idea here, if you kind of play really close into the corner. Okay, Reyna's... Just try to swing off her there, that's why I moved fast. I think she might actually be flanking here. Taking a lesson out of my book. Okay, she's going this way. I know exactly where I want to go. Looking at Omen here. Shadows traveling. Okay, I'll set up and trying to get up close. Swing off Omen. If he makes contact, I'll look to try and run and swing in really fast. I'm glancing back and forth from my crosshair in the minimap over and over and over again. Last player standing. Okay, play right here. Go for the left right click combo. All right, and remember, if you want to unlock all of the full Smurf commentaries of this challenge on every single map, check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Otherwise, you know the deal. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to show your support, and let us know you want to see more guides on this channel like this one. Also, leave a comment and let us know what Smurf challenge you'd like to see us take on next, as we may just create a guide on it, and we read all the comments you leave and are always looking for feedback. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.